Hi everyone, uh, welcome to the RSS with HD. We've got a petrol head on our show right now and it's Ron Hogg. Hi everyone, welcome to the RSS with HD with myself Rashid Saleh and Harish Joel right here. And of course, um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got um, a petrol, uh, petrol head on our show. He is actually the Safe and Mutual Director. Please welcome Ron Hogg onto the show. Hi Ron, how are you? Hi everyone. Slama Hari Raya. Slama Hari Raya to you as well, Rashid. Okay, we're, we don't like to waste uh, any time, so we're going to go straight and get Harish to like grill you because uh, I'm usually the nice person. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Rod, welcome to the show and thanks for um, you know uh, joining us. Now, uh, for those who don't really know Ron Hogg, um, uh, you should kill yourself because this man <laughs> is pretty much synonymous with uh, two wheels in the country. Uh, the man who you know joined his uh, father, Sam Hogg, and they started. They were the actually Sam was the brainchild of. Uh, the Malaysian Cup Pre Championship and the Asia Road Racing Championship, which started in 1994 and 1996, respectively. So some of you weren't even born then. So yeah, that's how long you know. Uh, that's in, that's in including us, right? Yeah. yeah. No. no, 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 no. <laughs> okay. This, this one that that one time that I say I'm older than that, but anyway, um, although uh, you know, um, Ron looks uh, 21, but anyway, stay Ron, on. Thank you. <laughs> let's. Uh, Go into the questions, yeah, the Malaysian Cup Prix. Now, um, you hope that it will resume in July. Um, I've read some reports uh, about you mentioning uh, about this. And um, you've not met the Youth and Sports Minister per se, but I'm sure that you've got representatives uh, to meet um, the ministry. Uh, do you think that the uh, authorities would be receptive to your goal of uh, starting in uh, July, given the current situation? Um, <clears throat> I, I, it's very hard to say at this current moment what the government of Malaysia is going to decide on. Um, we, in a way, are sort of followers. So with the rest of the world now slowly opening up, and especially for motorsports, Formula One and MotoGP have somewhat come up with a new calendar. Uh, we are hoping that the Malaysian government is going to follow suit. Uh, the good side was that in the last... Uh, PKBB or MCOC or whatever it was. CMCO. They, they, they allowed they allowed motorsports to resume, uh, yeah. but only on practice. So that's that's a positive side of things, you know. So we, we are staying positive, and we believe that uh, because there is no, it's not a contact sport in that sense. Um, we should be given the opportunity to resume. Uh, albeit in the new the new norm, uh, and we reckon it would be behind closed doors, and I think we're perfectly fine with that. Um, the championship is live telecast either way on national TV, so we're just waiting for them to say go and what are the procedures that we need to put in place before we can start. If July is a no-go, what's your plan B? Uh, I think at the end of the day, the the plan changes on a weekly basis, you know. Okay. So it's hard it's hard to come up with a plan now. I mean, in an ideal situation, we we can't run ten rounds already at this moment. It will be difficult. So we're looking at uh, probably eight races at this current moment. And if it gets uh, shunted to start later in the year, then it means we will lose races uh, or championship rounds that we can do. And from the championship perspective. We are looking at changing the sporting side of regulations to make it exciting. Uh, so we used to do 10 rounds for the Malaysian Cup Prix, uh, which means there's 250 points up for grab for each classes. So we may we may end up doing two races per weekend. Uh, we may throw in qualifying with some bonus points just to keep it uh, vibrant and opportunity for all the guys to still get as many points and make the championship competitive. But Ron, with uh, lesser you know, races, if, uh, I mean, July, you can still have your 10 rounds, I presume. But if anything beyond, I I, I, I mean, you, you tell me, can, can, can you do 10 rounds uh, if, if you start in July? I think we're already looking at cutting it down to eight, you know. Okay. Uh, um, because one of the conditions I'm pretty sure will be, uh -huh. it needs to be behind uh, closed door events. 
So Capri will not be able to run on the streets as what we used to. So uh -huh. we are looking at running at all the circuits that are available for us to utilize. So there are not that many circuits in the country. So yeah. there, therein lies the other problem. It's pointless running three, four times on the same venue. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we've got four or five venues at this moment. We're looking at, in an ideal situation, two in each track. If not, then we'll need to look at the sea. Sorry, sorry, so, sorry, sorry. Let, yeah. okay, I'd like to cut in. Um, uh, uh. Just for the for the uh, uh, the uninitiated, why why are we running away from uh, from from open space and and roads and stuff? Um, and going back to circuits for those who are aren't aware of it. I I think basically because of the social distancing issue we have uh, within a track, <clears throat> we are able to control the participants and the officials who are there to ensure that we practice the SOP. But if you're running in open places, and for example, we used to run in Pontian City or Telo Intan, it's difficult for you to stop the crowd from just stopping by and watching. And um, on this perspective, you have to support the government's call for social distancing, which is the best way to stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah. And we are prepared to run in closed door events. And I think most of our clients and sponsors and partners are, have all agreed to this already. So it's pointless for us to run in an open space. Uh, if you know, from a commercial point of view, you can't set up the promotion area, people cannot come, what's the point? So we're just focusing towards the racing side at, it, at this moment and trying to give our clients more on air, you know. All right, okay, okay Ron, you. You, you mentioned about, you know, the com making commercial sense and wouldn't you think um, Commercial sense would actually dictate that the uh, season be scraped because even uh, scrapped. Sorry, if because um, you know eight rounds and you can't do the marketing as you you know initially intended, which is at an open space and although it's televised, but uh, yet nothing beats the uh, you know face-to-face uh, -face, uh, interaction. So yeah, with, with the limited number of racers, you know, with this uh, with these challenges in mind. Do you think it still makes financial uh, commercial sense to actually go ahead with the 2020 season? Uh, I think we have to uh, okay. to fight for it because of the the number of people involved in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. It's already unpre unprecedented times in the sense that nobody is clear uh, how they will meet their obligations with the contracts that they have signed. Mm -hmm. You know, teams have already started paying for their staff, riders for the last four or five months. Uh -huh. You know, basically most of the contract starts from 1st January. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have riders, uh, teams, mechanics, uh, engineers. And even on our end, we've got a lot of uh, part-time, full-time guys, I would say, who we sign contracts with to, to do the season. And if we call this scrap at this moment, uh, mm -hmm. that would be an easy way out. But think about all those people who have uh, a social responsibility towards mm -hmm. the people that they have employed. And at this moment, most of our partners, mm -hmm. I can say all our partners are keen for us to ensure that the season continues. Also, uh, a year without racing, it's like you're going to put back the development of these riders um, quite quite far, you know, they need to practice. So it's not something that we want, but I think it's something that we have to get used to at this moment. I'm, I'm glad you raised uh, development because, uh, you know, I've been longing to ask you about this. When it comes to motorsports, the first thing that comes to people's mind is like F1 or MotoGP. And when they think or they hear about the Malaysian Cup Pre or when they see it, the general consensus would be, oh, it's a, oh, by the way, um, tournament or uh, competition, but it is through the Malaysian Cup Pre system that we have unearthed a whole lot of talents, uh, including, you know, um, our legendary uh, Sharul Yuzi. Now, what are your views about this, uh, oh, by the way, uh, attitude uh, about the Malaysian Cup Pre? It is so important, yet people just don't understand the importance of it. <laughs> I, think, I think, you know, development work is never sexy, you know, I think uh, <laughs> yeah. across the board for all sports. Um, I followed, I, I, I'm into sports, all right? So I followed Malaysian sports since the 80s, as, um, you know, with our Malaysian football, before we went pro, you know, semi-pro, pro and all that stuff. I followed Nicole David when she was like seven, eight years old because I had a friend who played squash as well at that time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's put Nicole David where she is at this moment, you know. Yeah. Um, 
it's true that that platform that was provided to all these mm -hmm. young players at that time. So similarly for Capri, mm -hmm. um, all the Malaysian riders and MotoGP has come from the system. Mm -hmm. So it, it it works and clearly because we are producing more talent at this moment because we the, the platform has been improved on, uh, the competition level has increased and more importantly now, um, there is a, you know, we have a team in MotoGP at this moment and they are also looking at Malaysian talent. So it is very important uh, because what we do, you see six, seven years later, the results. Yeah. Um, so it's hard for people to understand this, but I guess it's the same across the board for all sports. So we're just lucky in the sense that we have an industry to support us. Industry, industry. Now, thanks, thanks for, for using that word. Um, the sports industry in this country uh, is not fully embraced by the powers that be. Um, we, we've got a thriving industry. Um, I, I would love to believe that we uh, the industry is actually uh, contributing millions, if not billions, uh, to the government, whether directly or indirectly, uh, through taxes and, and through a whole lot of uh, spillover. But um, what are your thoughts about, about the government's uh, initiative to actually embrace uh, the sports industry and not this is not not the role of the youth and sports ministry alone it's actually the role of all the ministries especially so the finance ministry um given the current situation there have been calls of uh, stimulus packages to be injected into the sports industry but my belief personally is that money is never enough lah. you know you can give how much you want it will still not be enough especially for sports what other steps do you think that the government should do to assist people like you uh, within the industry? I think for, I've got short-term plans and long-term plans, I think for the government. Uh, yeah. The long-term plan, 20 years ago, we've been shouting that we need more facilities to run races, which is more tracks in the country. And unfortunately, the, the system has been such where they decide to build a track and then, you know, they, they don't get the right consultants. Then finally, we have a track which is not approved. Uh, we've seen this across all sports as well, cycling as well, you know, but we've had a few tracks built by local governments, uh -huh. uh, state governments that finally when it's done, it was a go-kart circuit, but it's not, it can't run go-kart races, it can't run motorcycle races. So I think this is the biggest problem we have. We need to provide facilities. And if in football was to flourish, you know, you need to provide fields and stadiums. So for races, to happen, the government needs to provide the tracks. I, I agree completely that money is never going to be enough. And when we decide to give money, more often than not, it's misuse and abuse in that sense. So uh, the stimulus package is needed uh, to ensure that people who work in the industry and people who work hard will benefit. And so tax, re tax reliefs, tax rebates, those are things that would spur the industry. You know, people, we've, we've not really had government support for motorsports actually in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, apart from hosting Formula One and MotoGP uh, and Sepang Circuit, you know. Uh, but the sports before Sepang was thriving uh, when we had tobacco money. And when tobacco yeah. money dried up and the government changed the regulations also for taxation for vehicles mm -hmm. because of uh, we had a national car. Um, the, the car races in Malaysia died, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, we used to have uh, fantastic races in Shah Alam and Pasir Gudang. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you had Malaysian teams who could afford to race in the classes with the BMW, for example. Um, the legendary BMW M1, which Hans Stark used to drive uh, back in the late 80s, you know, but it was because the cars were more affordable. There were no taxes to those cars and people could afford to race. But when we had all these importation taxes, motorsports immediately suffered a lot. And then tobacco ban, and then immediately they lost. We had uh, Marlboro, Rotman's, JPS, uh, Lucky Strike, almost all the tobacco guys involved in the industry. So the government needs to really look at that in that sense because the, the sports even back then didn't get the support from the government. But uh, the, the industry was there to support. At this moment, we have the local industry, uh, which is the motorcycle manufacturers, uh, oil and gas companies, and all the accessories and parts. 
but there's only a limitation of what they can do as well. And unless something is done to we attract more corporate sponsors and partners into the events, it will be difficult to progress. So I feel the government has just two, two roles to play in that sense, you know, to, to provide uh, tracks over the next 10, 15 years to build three to four more tracks. Mm -hmm. And you will see the local industry or where those tracks are located. Uh, these creating a mini industry for motorsports, you know, workshops will open, um, local events can happen on a weekly basis. That spurs the economic trade off, you know, uh, we work very closely with Buriram Circuit. And okay, while well, Buriram in Thailand is the champion for the Thai Football League for a couple of years, mm -hmm. they were not really known outside of Thailand, you know. And even in Thai in Thailand, a lot of people didn't go to Buriram because it was uh, 400 kilometers away from Bangkok. Mm -hmm. But when the owner started this circuit, uh, within a year and a half, Buriram became the top five uh, places to visit in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And that spurred a new industry completely. You know, Buriram was a town which is, I would say, like Semenye or Kuala Slang or a really small town. But now they've got uh, five-star hotels. They've got uh, more flights coming into the city. So motorsports create that economic hub, which probably other sports can't. You know, when we go to Buriram, uh, we have seven, 800 people staying there for a week. Mm -hmm. So just imagine the, the spin-off of money to the local community. You know, football, they, they had a football team. Uh, the the owner, Mr. Nevin, is also a shareholder of Leicester Football Club. Mm -hmm. But he himself told me that, you know, football people come a day before the team, maximum 60 guys, they, they train, they play the game, and next day they're off. And most of the fans usually come in by buses, mm -hmm. watch the game and go back overnight. So they don't even stay in the city. Mm -hmm. So motorsports can bring that to the local community if people can only be aware of this or understand this better. You know, if you create a theme park, for example, water parks, etc. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many around the country. Mm -hmm. um, once you've been there, the chances of you going there second time, third time is going to be very difficult. Correct. But if, if we have a track in Buriram or in the jungle somewhere, provided mm -hmm. they have all the other facilities to support the racetrack, mm -hmm. we will go there on a yearly basis, uh, maybe two or three two or three times as well. So it's just about how to understand how motorsports can contribute to the local community and bring the money in. Ron, uh, before we go, I just want to ask you this. If you were given an opportunity to build three more tracks in Malaysia, where would it be? Uh, definitely for the peninsula, you know, we're looking at one in the northern region, one in the southern region and one probably... Specific, 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 specific Probably location. Penang. Penang, you know, okay. because of the Penang internet. Space, man? <laughs> Not uh, island, uh. Penang Island, no, but but actually, <laughs> to be honest with you, there's still there's still land to be to develop. Okay. Uh, okay. Penang, Kedah. I know Kedah is supposed to be building a track. We've heard that yes. a couple of years, but nothing seems to move. Uh -huh. uh, we hope uh, Johor or Pasir okay. gets revived. It's been um, it's now being managed by the royal family, and I think they're looking at investors to try to help build back the circuit, and probably one Trungano or Pahang, you know. Okay. This would be an ideal location in the next 10 years if we could have these three tracks, then the the motorsports industry in Malaysia will grow rapidly. Sabah, Sarawak? Definitely one. Um, I think they need one, definitely, in Sarawak. Yeah, we, we, we do. We do, we do. We desperately do. We've got so much talent. I'm. Uh, I, I, I'm also um, president of MMA and we've got so much talent in a lot of sports is unbelievable uh, but we don't have the resources or the infrastructure. Uh, that was something I wanted to ask you but I know we haven't got much time. I'll probably talk to you off or after the show about that. <laughs> I think Sarawak, yes, there's some rumours of them trying to look at a track. There was also some news about Sabah also looking at a track. I think... Uh, Domestically, Sarawak will work better because it is a larger place and I think it's, it has a more thriving economy than Sabah. And you, you need the local economy to support the track as well. Mm -hmm. um, whether we can go and race there at this moment, it's another story because it's also quite expensive to travel to uh, East Malaysia. Uh, we mm -hmm. used to run Capri 2006 to 2008 in Sabah and Sarawak, mm. and I can tell you logistically it costs a lot, a lot of money. 
you know, and it's not something sustainable in that sense. So it would be better if they have a series of their own and they create the talents. Uh, and if that talent is so good, they have the opportunity to come over here and then progress in their career. But thank you very much, Fran, for, for, for being on the show with us on the RSS with HD. Uh, it's been really great. Uh, I, we'll probably get you on again uh, sometime because uh, I think there's a lot more that we need to engage with you in terms of uh, the information that we needed to, to move motorsports forward. Uh, and you are pretty much an encyclopedia when it comes to, to that kind of uh, information. So thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, any last words? Well, I, I, I hope the, you know, we, we go, we adapt to this new norm and we get to proceed and then we see where this leads us. Um, I think for the motorsports industry, this year is going to be very important because uh, we're going to have problems next year in 2021 if everybody doesn't have a, a good year this year. So we are hoping for the best and, you know, hope to see you guys at the track one of these days as well. Yeah, very, very much so, very much so. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like uh, to the RSS with HD. This has been the RSS with HD. We'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.